buddy. Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, Dan, we were just talking about how we thought that, that men our age, the age that we are now, when we were growing up in the Mormon church, just had it all figured out. They just... They just, they were so confident. They knew they, everything. They had life experiences. They had it, they had it down. Yeah. They and we how- are going to talk, we are now that age. We are now <laughs> the age of those men, those, yeah. those powerful, we're the age priesthood that holding men. <laughs> your parents were when they had you. Yeah. Yeah, Basically, my mom, my right? mom, yeah, my mom was 40 when she had me. Yeah. I'm about to turn 46. How old was your, were they roughly the same age? My dad was a year and a half younger. Oh, really? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Very progressive stuff. Wow. Very progressive that. stuff. Yeah. Okay. So you're well past the age. At, 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 at your age, your parents had a six year old running around. And yeah. And a four year old? Yeah. Yeah. Roughly. Wow. Yeah. I'm the oldest. My, my parents were, uh, could you imagine? In Mormon a- terms, they they were elderly <laughs> by the time they had kids. That, although that is considered a geriatric pregnancy, apparently, technically, medically. Yeah. How insulting is that? Right. If you're the geriatric parent. Yeah. Mother at age 40. Yeah, I have a friend who's pregnant now and she's like, oh, okay. I get it. Really cute. Just everybody. slap me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, we'll be getting to that. Just yeah. kind of like some some ideas that we have about where that all comes from. About life in our geriatric years. <laughs> but first, Dan, I want to talk about the ongoing story of Cakes, Colorado, oh God. and gay marriage. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's, le- it's, le- ladies and gentlemen, if you are a gay person... Please do not get married in in Colorado. It it can it can only end in a lawsuit. That's the only thing. That's the only outcome possible. Well, you never know exactly what's going to happen. Or you right? have to bake all of your own. You have to you have to do everything yourself. All right, because Cal, uh, because Colorado does have an anti discrimination law, right? Uh, that is meant to protect uh, people from the kinds of discrimination that the that that cake maker uh did what, yeah the the what i don't remember the, the name of the place. masterpiece masterpiece cake some cake shop artistry yeah because that's what he was claiming right that he's Monster an artist piece is more like it <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway uh in a recent uh court ruling uh in colorado um by the 10th u.s circuit court of appeals in colorado uh in denver rather um, a woman who, uh, has a wedding website business where she designs websites for weddings. Oh, one of those things. Oh, lovely. Right. Um, she was suing the state because she wanted to shore up her right to discriminate against gay people. Well, the last thing you want to do is create digital, uh, assets <laughs> for the queer <laughs> community. Exactly. Yeah. Just, just terrible. Um, and so this was essentially because the, the masterpiece cake, uh, case when the U S court, Supreme court ruled on it, they actually were pretty uh, narrow in their decision. Right. Right. Yes. They, Um, they, that was like, they ruled in the wrong way, but it was, it was only applied to that specific thing. And they made it clear that that wasn't to be a, uh, uh, a precedent for other for future right things. and and in that case they decided that the Colorado Civil Rights Commission had acted with anti-religious bias which was bullshit uh, against the cake maker um after he refused to bake the cake for two it was uh, two men who were getting married um but it did not at the time rule on sort of the larger question of whether a business can invoke religious objections yeah uh, to refuse service. basically bunted on this. Yeah. One. Bunt cake. Was that the. Oh, it, it was, <laughs> was. I was going with the sport reference, but yes, there's a cake <laughs> reference there too. Well done. Uh, to refuse service, obviously, to LGBTQ people. So, anyway, uh, in this, uh, she was trying to get, she was trying to test this whole thing and, and, and get them to actually uh, say, yes, of course you can religiously. Uh, discriminate. discriminate against yeah. gay people. Of course you can, business owner. Uh, it turns out um, 
she uh, she really hadn't she wasn't even in business yet, which I think is really weird. Uh, the Colorado Solicitor General questioned whether Smith could even be allowed to challenge the law since she had not started offering wedding websites yet. Oh, so she nobody had hired her to no. do this. She's just she's just suing so that she she can know she, is she doesn't want to do it. Literally right? suing on the off chance a gay person might approach her. Right. In the future. Oh, yeah. She does not want to be in a position, any way in, in the position. She is a woman of principle, I'll tell uh, you that. <laughs> but the uh, Solicitor General said that um, if she did actually start up her business and had to, like, refuse, uh, the, her argument would mean that she would refuse to create a website for a hypothetical same-sex couple named Alex and Taylor, but that she would agree to make the same one for an opposite sex couple with the same names. Yeah. Alex and Taylor. Um, he said that, uh, he said that would be discrimination under the Colorado Anti-Discrimination Act, which explicitly prohibits discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. Can I, can um, I discriminate just based on, uh, not liking the names Alex and Taylor? <laughs> I think I don't think that's you a just protected all of the Alex's and Taylor. That's just not a protected class. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Okay. All right. Um, the judge uh, wrote, or one of the judges wrote in the majority opinion, because it was two to one that mm. they they decided this. Uh, that quote: We must also consider the grave harms caused when public accommodations discriminate on the basis of race, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. Combating such discrimination is like individual autonomy, essential to our democratic ideals. In the dissent, the one judge wrote, um, this case illustrates exactly why we have a First Amendment. Properly applied, the Constitution protects Ms. Smith from the government telling her what to say or do. No, that's not how that works. Yeah, I know. But it is an interesting... It. it, it I recently kind of was thinking about this and I was like, well, what if I uh, were a, a business owner as a gay man? Right. And yeah. what if my business was, um, what if it was like a print shop? Right. And I was print like print banners and signs and whatnot. And somebody ordered, you know, something, a, a sign something that was offensive. offensive. Yeah. Right. To gay people. Right. Right. Like it, it, it it, it is an interesting question of like, I get the whole thing of like you open up a business and it's, it's supposed to be open to the public and you're not supposed to, you know, discriminate right. and refuse business from whomever is coming in. And if it was just on the side of not being hate speech, how would I feel about printing those signs? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting conundrum, right? It's not like when you easy. put yourself into that other side. We shouldn't we shouldn't be glib about this being yeah. easy. This, I think I think that point is right. Yeah. This is this is there's a there's a line here and and as a society, I think I think we feel good about where we're at, but like but, I don't think it's resolved and I don't think it's been resolved in entirely the right way yet. But I don't think that your case is analogous because the the I feel like the analog would be because these people want to discriminate not because of the content, mm. but because of who the customer is. Like, that's a very different thing. So if you wanted to... They just it, hate, like, if you lemon had a, poppy seed, and that's just what this couple <laughs> fucking wants. If you wanted... If you opened your print shop and you were like, I will print anything, but I won't do it for Christians, Christians that's not okay. Mm. But if you say there's certain there's certain content that I won't do, right? And I won't do that content for anybody. Alex and Taylor. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the analog. Mm. So I don't think I I I I think I think they're in the clear to to. And I, I, I'm not arguing like against the idea. I just yeah. I kind of wanted to put myself in that position and see, like, is. Is there something? And I don't know what it is because obviously I don't feel good about the idea of like allowing people to discriminate against gay people. You know, right? the, like, of course I don't. You know what the truth but where is? Is, the, is the line right where it should be? The truth is that these uh, cake shop owners and whatever are playing this all wrong. Oh, I'm glad they don't listen to this show because I'm about to give <laughs> the exact way to play this. 
I mean, they want it to go to the courts because they want to be big right. martyrs for their right. for their cause or whatever. But if you actually just don't want to serve gay people, make it so that yes, you, like your policy is, of course, we serve anyone. We will make a cake for anyone. Mm-hmm. But just have Christian hateful bullshit on your walls mm. up everywhere. Make it clear mm. that you're on that they're unwelcome. They won't. You know, the minute they walk in your door, they're not gonna they're not gonna patronize you. Put it on your website. But what if they're the really the best cakes in town? Yeah. I am I to deny myself the <laughs> masterpiece cake? Right. You make or a great the, point. Or the the website. I mean, yeah, you make a great point. Uh, all right. So yeah, that's true. What if it's such a great wedding website? It's oh. so good. Oh my God. Is the I best. need that website. All right, Frank, I'm going to take us. Do you remember when we went, <laughs> you and I went on our road trip nine or something a long time, a ago. long, yeah. many years ago. Yeah. Uh, and when we were in Dallas, we went to a creation museum Oh yeah, in yeah, Dallas. Yeah. yeah, I remember this. Yeah. Which was the first place that I had ever that I ever heard the the name Kent Hovind. Ah, uh, I remember distinctly the guy that was that was giving us the tour. We were not allowed to go through unattended. Right. We were. We had a a personal tour guide who guided us through everything. We were we were tended to. We were we were. I we didn't even say who the like what we represented or anything. But he I, could tell they. They had our he number. Knew. He knew. Cause no, because no one goes to there. <laughs> Literally, it's either a bus full of like church kids right. or nobody. And, and these, there was nobody these there. These two mid-30s guys come walking through the Traipsing door. Traipsing in and just like, hey, we want to <laughs> see what you got. And he's like, oh, okay. I will show you all of the things now. You are now attached to me. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, Kent Hovind was one of the guys that he proclaimed as the you know the sort of the the grand savior of of how dinosaurs and he, how we know that dinosaurs and humans coexisted and mm. all of this stuff that runs very much counter to you know reality mm. but they yeah, you know they got they yeah. they've got all this stuff anyway Kent Hovind who not too long ago and maybe was at that time when we were there in jail uh, he was sentenced in 2006. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison for tax fraud because he insisted that the money that he got from his ministries, his various uh, bullshit mm-hmm. min- dinosaur ministries or whatever, <laughs> that wasn't his. Uh, it was God's money, and there and therefore no taxes were. Oh owed. God! Um, how did that, that? How did that work for him? That argument. He went to jail. <laughs> Uh, so not ideally. What? Well, uh, bad news for Kent. Uh, he's in trouble with the law again. Arrested. Oh. Uh, having apparently, uh, allegedly, beaten up his girlfriend. This he sounds like a nice guy. Doesn't he sound great? Wow. Like knows everything there is to know about dinosaurs, <laughs> uh, except the facts. Right. And uh yeah, domestic ab- abuse, Jesus domestic assault. Right. Okay. Apparently, apparently she she alleges that he quote body slammed her. Oh god. Picked her up and threw her to the ground. What? Uh she alleges that uh that she he, she was threatened with a gun. Oh my god. So Wow. This uh, and I'm sure that this is going to be the end of his career. Mm- I'm sure that it's not. <laughs> In point of fact, but, what we have discovered is that you can't end one of these guys. If they are white and male, they will come back. This is not the way to ruin their career. No, no. By being, you know, mean to or bad. It's not mean, obviously. Yeah. It's abusive. Abuse does not hurt these guys. <laughs> yeah. They're supposed to be abusive. I think it's in the it's in the the job title. So. Oh my god. All right. Well, let's see what, what where where his where he lands in the next couple of years. Yeah. I have to pay attention to that. Dan, yes. A uh recently published study in the Journal of Psychology of Religion and Spirituality uh Sounds has great. uh <laughs> I'm excited already. <laughs> it's found that 
Um, people are less tolerant of atheists expressing their beliefs at work compared to Christians, Muslims, or Jews. I know that. Is that like... There's no study needed. <laughs> no. There... We didn't... We clearly did not know. <laughs> How dare you, Dan? This was unknown. This is... I mean, we need the study to be able to point to and go, uh -huh. Because uh, because every Christian and every religious person thinks that they're, of course, the most oppressed person right. in the room. Right. No, um, apparently, um, well, what they wanted to do is they, they the, the researchers, they're, they're saying that no research uh, up to this point had uh, examined how atheists are perceived in the workplace specifically, right? Okay, that there have sure. been studies looking at like, societally like just kind of the attitudes that people have about atheists and the fact we know that we're like the least trusted and the most hated group in america yeah. that we don't that we we're that we're less liked than muslims yeah in this country right so what they did is they developed this this uh, three-part test right there was a three-part study and they tested different groups and they they specifically wanted to look at uh, symbols of belief in the workplace because they felt that that was kind of a minor uh, thing to kind of look at specifically mm. because they they knew that if they asked people point blank like should being an atheist um, limit somebody's advancement in the workplace right. or preclude them from different opportunities or what whatnot the, the general sense of fairness would kind of skew that yeah because yeah. it's so overt because right? people would go against their own actual thinking their right. own uh, their own real feelings right because they know the correct answer right and so they were looking at things like um little displays of belief such as a quote Mm. Right, that you might pin up on your cubital, cubicle wall, sure, and whether or not you should be allowed to have that, right. or your perception about whether that was attacking your beliefs, right, right, which of course the believers thought they yeah. were being attacked. Of course they did. Uh, and the other thing that they were look they they kind of used as a little test was like a little pin, right, like some sort of. A little cross or a little, you know, Star of David, Star of David or a crescent moon, whatever. Um, or I don't know what they would have done for, but I think it was TGIA a TGIA t shirt. Is that what we're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wear your TGIA t shirt to work, guys. Right. Um, a, little, a little atheist, a little, a little yeah. evolution fish or something. Yeah. And what they, what they found through the course of these, of course, is that, yes. Uh, Christian Jews and Muslims who were religious uh, felt attacked. Yeah, by by this. Isn't that um, ridiculous? It's, yeah, I feel that every time I I go onto Facebook and people post all of this shit, they just declare their their beliefs left and right with absolute impunity. Yeah, oh, and yeah. and it is eminently clear. Every now and then, I go on and I just declare my beliefs too. Uh -huh just as an exercise right but you can feel the temperature in the room yeah it just is a different like everybody's super tolerant yeah of everybody's beliefs whether it's stupid or not like it is less okay to attack someone for saying you know that they believe that like you know the universe is energy and and you know if all you have to do is just expose yourself to enough sunlight and you'll never get sick or something stupid mm -hmm. like that. Right. It is less okay to attack that than <laughs> like that doesn't offend anybody. But if you say, I'm really happy that ever since I found out, ever since I realized that I don't believe in God, mm -hmm. you're not saying anything about anybody else. You're no. just saying something about you. Everybody just loses their damn mind. It, well, it's seen as being pushy, right? As pushing your beliefs and rather as a, than just stating. And as attacking their beliefs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so uh, one of the other things that they, I thought this was actually really interesting. They sort of set up this scenario where uh, they sort of asked about the, they call them the belief pin. Um, if uh, the, the one of the religious people was wearing their belief pin sort of in a public facing setting for the for the company right right um versus the atheist wearing their belief pin in sort of that same public facing area the the religious people saw it as a threat to the business 
right? They saw it as like something that would like ward off business right and threaten sort of right the 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 future earnings of and course they did. so it, it's interesting um yeah. it just further solidifies the idea that um yeah that we're perceived clearly as an out group and what what is interesting is that the muslims were viewed as part of the religious in group and yeah. they and they they kind of talked about how um specifically the abrahamic um faiths were all viewed each other nicely enough yeah right well enough to not feel like that those expressions were were threatening to their own i'm reasonably confident i was fired from a job because i'm an atheist oh, now, really? they didn't make that the express reason no, no. but it was very it was a very clearly unfair firing and you know the the state found oh, yeah. believe the, the state agreed that it was an unfair firing and they oh, gave okay. me, you know but it was just but I, I the only thing that i could come up with was that uh, a couple of my coworkers were talking about religious stuff and I just chimed in with my opinion. Uh -oh. I was not forceful. I was not aggressive. Right. Uh, it was enough. My bad. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to tell a story that I find m shocking in multiple ways. The most shocking element of the story. This oh. is, this is an Olympics story or oh. rather it has an Olympics uh, angle to you it. You love the Olympics. I don't, I'm, but but I have enjoyed some of the Olympics. <laughs> Israel got its, I think it's only its second gold medal, like ever. Really? Yeah. Huh. They're, okay. They're, you know, it's a small country. They don't have a lot of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, things, I mean, but fair they, enough. but they hmm. got their second. They got a gold medal. It uh, it was a man and by the name of Artem Dol. Gopiat. <laughs> I think I nailed it. Mm. Uh, anyway, I, I love that you were actually excited about the opportunity <laughs> to say that name. I was, I was, Bef I was before the show. I you was were... nervous. <laughs> I try, I tried to say it before, just before the show, just to, just to have it in my mouth, and I still messed it up. Anyway, <laughs> Dolgopiat, uh, is won the yeah Israel's second ever gold medal. Oh, good, for and the good. first. In artistic gymnastics. Oh, okay. So uh, the second shocker of this whole thing is that the guy who won the gold medal in artistic gymnastics isn't gay. And then and <laughs> he, he is, in point of fact, uh, dating a woman that he would like to marry. Oh, this is not going where I thought it was. No. Here's okay. the thing. Uh all you know, with with the spotlight on him, suddenly people are asking, "Wait, why can't you marry?" Well, guess what? He ain't Jewish enough to get married in Israel. What? What? Uh, so the the deal he was not he was born in Ukraine and uh, moved to Israel. Now, under uh, Israel's law of return, anyone who has a Jewish grandparent, okay, can become an Israeli citizen. Okay. Uh, so that's, so that's the law. However, in order to be considered Jewish, you have to have a Jewish mother. Oh, so I guess he's got a paternal grandparent or, 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 oh. or, you know, his, his maternal grandfather is Jewish or something. Right. So the matrilineal line doesn't get to him. Uh, oh no! And they have very strict laws against interfaith marriages, and his girlfriend is Jewish. What? This is outrageous. Because you have to be, uh, you have to, all marriages, all Jewish marriages must be conducted by a rabbi authorized by the chief rabbinate, mm -hmm. uh, and they won't do it. So wow! So he's stuck. Can't he? He can win gold for his country, but his country won't let him marry the the girl of his dreams. Can I mean? I'm assuming they could like get married outside of Israel, and would Israel recognize the marriage at that point? Does that say? I don't know. But that is how. Wow. Yeah, our guy, our 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 friend, friend of the show, Rabbi Gruber would would gladly marry them. Yeah, he's a he's a an Orthodox rabbi. Yeah. 
Uh, but he does interfaith marriages. Yeah, that's kind of his thing. Much to much to the chagrin of the rabbinate. <laughs> Rabbi Gruber. Do not. You are chagrinning people, <laughs> sir. Boy, so yeah, that's a uh, yeah, yeah. That's a hell of a thing. Israel Israel is a they're a bit of a conundrum. I, yeah. I feel like there's it, there's mystery. It's wrapped in mystery. It's well, it, it, it it's one of those things you you always just keep stumbling into things that are confusing. Yeah, right. I mean that's Israel for because me. it's I'm it's just such a it, it so can largely be. confused by, by yeah. Israel because they can have very liberal policies about a lot of things. Yeah, and huh. then and yeah, but they're run by a bunch of orthodox like high, like ultra orthodox yeah people who oh, yeah, yeah it's a crazy town. All right, well, uh, Dayan, yes. uh down there in Florida, there's a mega church. <laughs> There's a lot probably a bunch of mega churches sure down there in Florida um but this one in particular uh let's see where's the name of it it doesn't really matter I don't I'll stumble upon the name at some point and I'll say it um no it's uh the Coral Ridge uh something evangelical church or something along those lines um but they um were named by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a uh, hate group they were labeled as sure. one right sure and uh they did not like that <laughs> no they this, did not uh, coral too. ridge something or other church uh and uh so they sued the southern poverty law center and largely because the the consequences of being labeled a hate group by the southern poverty law center is that some places like amazon for example because that's what where the story goes, uh, will view you as a hate group, right? Right. And if they have like they have that fundraising thing mm. that they do, where like 05 percent of the sale of you know anything that you do in the name of that organization for things that you purchase on Amazon, right? Yeah. Um. That was yeah. They've got a portal that that yeah. like will donate to will donate to, to and to, you can just kind of select that uh, my you, purchases. I want. 0.5% to to go to X organization. Charity of my choice. Charity of my choice. However, if you are on the if SPCL's you're on the, shit list, you can uh, Amazon will not let you participate in the program. Pretty smart. Right? That's that's good. And so this church got pissed off about it and decided to sue. And the uh, the 11th Circuit Court has uh sided with the Southern Poverty Law Center. And they are saying that uh, essentially Amazon has First Amendment rights as an organization that um, preclude the, 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 any sort of discrimination right. that uh, the, the, this church is, is, is feeling or maybe even experiencing right. at the hand of Amazon. If you are hateful... Yeah. Meaning you're happy to discriminate. I mean, in this case, with, with churches in the United States of America that the SPCL designates as a hate group, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty much always because they, they don't like gay people. They, and hate. they preach against gays. Yeah. Yeah. And then they cry foul because it's just our beliefs and it's the Bible and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, well, okay, but your beliefs and the Bible uh, are are mean. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. That's good yeah, that the no, court the court has ruled. Thank God you that know? Uh, that hate speech is indeed hateful, and you're allowed to call it that. Yeah. Well, and more importantly, that um, and also that an organization like Amazon can they, they 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 can they they don't have to let you raise money on their platform. Right. They're not if they don't agree with your stances on certain issues. They're not legally required to yeah. give you donations. Right dicks <laughs> shut up well i'm gonna leave us with uh with uh, a, a dust up in the world of romantic novels oh yeah do you ever read a good no romantic novel i don't read non-romantic novels <laughs> i don't read any no novels I, i'm not i so no I've, I've never read a romantic novel i haven't either i've i've kind of i've thumbed through them a little bit just to mm. sort of get a a feel of the flavor because mm. i just yeah i mean spicy. 
No, uh, trashy. <laughs> Garbage. Yeah. Garbagey. Yeah. I might write one just for fun. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there is, it turns out, as one of our listeners wrote in to us about, mm-hmm. a category within this that I was not aware of, which is Christian romantic novels. Oh. Right? Those must be really spicy. How exciting is that? <laughs> Apparently, it's literally just like they save themselves for marriage. Oh, nonsense. how romantic. Right? Yeah. <laughs> definitely but, definitely not sexy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Throbbing members stayed on the other side of the room. <laughs> and safely ensconced in his pants. <laughs> Through which she could not see anything. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Anyway, uh, there is apparently an award, uh, Sarah. There are awards for... Uh, Romance novels, mm. uh, now known as the Vivian Awards, oh. and the uh, the Romance Writers of America give this award. They have rescinded their award in the category of uh, whatever it is, whatever whatever the Christian category. It's the oh, it's the religious or spiritual elements category, the oh. romance with religious or spiritual elements, which apparent which I. I am informed basically just means evangelical Christian. Right. Okay. Uh, they, <laughs> they, they gave this award to a book called at love's command mm. by one Karen. If this is a pen name, I, I cannot handle it. <laughs> this thing. Okay. First of all, a Christian novelist writing under the name Karen is perfect. <laughs> Karen Whitemeyer. Hmm. Not white, W-I-T-E, but still, you don't put Karen and white in the same. Anyway, uh, <laughs> apparently this ba- the, the novel actually opens with the hero uh, valiantly winning uh, in the battle in, in the battle at Wounded Knee. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's all of those, good. all of those O's, <laughs> correct. That's not a good start. No, it apparently, it very much apparently romanticizes the killing of oh, Native Americans. God. Okay. So, real, real cute way to start a romance story. But wait a second, they rescinded. So this so, had they. So they, they gave the award to them. Oh Jesus. Christ. Yeah, apparently okay. apparently the whole world of romance novels is a fucking disaster. Okay. It's just a mess. It's not surprising, right? But at least they uh they took it back. So yeah, Okay. So there you go. Uh <laughs> A, that category exists, right. which Oh, those poor poor people. Uh, like if you need to read a romance novel, great. But oh my god, the sad people that have to turn to that segment of romance novels. <sighs> It's, you know, it's like, it's kind of like when I was vegetarian for a while, right? (laughs) I just, no, 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 no. I just really didn't get into like the fake meats. Right. Right. Why why do I need this fake meat thing? I'm a vegetarian, right? Like I I can eat vegetables. Yes. There are plenty of wonderful (laughs) options for me. Why do I feel like I have to have this fake chicken whatever thing, right? Right. That's not good. Glob of gluten. That's just wretched, right? Um, And I I think uh, the same logic applies. Like, if you can't have a real steamy novel, yeah, it's not good. What? Yeah, literally. What? What you're doing? The whole purpose is to be a little titillated, right? Right. A little. You're literally eliminate. Like, go read a really a good novel. Yeah. You're taking all the worst parts of the worst novels, and. Eliminating all of the good parts. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, go go read a dirty novel. We're, we're <laughs> if, if you if you need to write into us and tell us something about your favorite Christian dirty novel, uh, please feel free to do so. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. or call us and tell us about it. Uh, the telephone number is four two four six 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 eight four four two. Leave us a voicemail. Stick around. There's more show coming up. Thank you. 
Frank, Dan, let me tell you something. Uh, Greg Locke, mm-hmm. uh, Pastor Greg Locke. Oh, yeah, 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 that guy. Uh, who now unironically does all of his preaching under a circus tent, which is <laughs> delightful. No. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. I ever, have not seen this. Ever since COVID, it's a giant big top Red and white striped. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. No. Circus tent. The man oh. is a walking parody of himself. Oh, that's amazing. It's un- it's it's amazing. He oh. literally he he is going off, and he is a he's lately a darling of the media, and we're mm. no we're no exception. Yeah, because he uh, he he's actually. A, he is a powerful Twitter presence. I don't know if you... Oh, really? I follow him on Twitter, and uh, he knows how to work it. Really? He knows okay. how to get the haters to uh, to bump up his... Oh, uh, uh, okay. Like, he says something, and everybody has to respond to him, including me. I try not to, but I... I don't respond to him, but I quote tweet, tweet him every oh, now and Oh, for sure, then. yeah. Yeah. Because uh, he's amazing. Huh. And he is one of the leading anti-vax, uh, anti-COVID... you know guys remaining in the country okay yeah yeah uh here's what he had to say this week so like he got in trouble last week apparently for saying that the delta variant wasn't real Uh uh-huh uh he's doubling down (gasps) and and he's screaming about it so let's listen to that i've been right about all of it we've been right about all of it oh yes Yes! These wicked fools don't win in the end! They don't win in the end! So all this fear bull crap is that! It is bull crap! Say amen! I know you've never been to a church where a pastor told you to say amen after I said bull crap. It's better than what I want to say! I call it real BS, biblical stupidity. Biblical stupidity. So I know I wasn't going to say nothing about it, but I think I feel froggy enough. I'm going to jump right now and just say this. I am not apologizing for what I said on this platform last week. The Delta variant was nonsense then. It is nonsense now. You will not wear masks in this church. You will not wear masks in this church. I'm telling you right now, do not get vaccinated. Do not get vaccinated. I don't care what you think about me. I don't need your money. I don't need your hand clap. I don't need more people on social media to follow me. I ain't following along with it. Joe Biden's days are numbered. I said they're numbered. I've told you the whole time this election was fraudulent. We got so much proof. The only people that can deny it are crack-smoking, demon-possessed leftists. (laughs) I'm about to tear this whole pool but in half. Well, when you said screaming, you didn't believe me. (laughs) You thought maybe he's using hyperbole. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He is a he's a fancy fella. I didn't know that I was a crack smoker. I where I we are behind on our crack <laughs> usage, my friend. He uh, and man, the jump from Delta's not real mm, vaccine, blah blah blah, to suddenly we're talking about Joe Biden again? Wait, what? Of course. We're talking about like does he know that he's supposed to be talking about Jesus? Does that does he know? No, they they seem to have forgotten about Jesus. They just it's, completely. Yeah. It's um, literally just a political machine at this point. Oh my god. Oh man, Greg. Good stuff. <laughs> that is uh that is, by the way, his Twitter is nonstop. Yeah. Trump is coming back. Yeah. He's been saying it and it's just it's just, it's delightful. Yeah. I really enjoy I, it. I do have to say this, Dan. You once asked me if there was one accent that I could just have. Or maybe I asked you this question, but then you <laughs> returned it on me. Like, and have it sincerely. That's the one. 
You want that one? I, it's just ridiculous. Sort and of delightful. Tennessee, yeah. Kentucky area. Like, yeah. yeah, I think that's a tennis. I think he's Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, it's, and you can got, holler in that. Like, yeah. In that oh, accent. yeah. Everybody likes what you're saying. Every, every, Even if, they like hearing you say it. Maybe they don't like what you're saying. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's fun. Nobody's listening to your content. They're just liking it. <laughs> they just want you to keep talking. <laughs> Greg Locke, just keep talking. Well, we had some folks write into us. Uh, we, one, of our, one of our listeners put out a call, if you'll recall, last week for charities that they could donate oh, yeah. to. Yes. That, they, uh, that, that aren't religious. Wonderful. And we had a good response. We had we had a number of people yeah. uh, respond to that. I have done no work vetting any of these charities, uh, so I want you to take it all with a grain of oh salt. God. Well, I we, <laughs> I uh, I'm a very busy person. <laughs> I don't. I didn't see you running out doing any vetting. Oh. Uh, I'm a very busy person, Dan. Yeah. As Any, well. Anyway, uh, so here are some. I'm just going to list a few that people have uh, that people have mentioned. Uh, one one of our listeners wrote in to say, uh, "Well, I I guess I just need to read the uh, the URL. Uh, it's kasseshumanistschool.webs.com. So K A S E S E humanistschool.webs.com." Uh, is apparently uh, there was a massacre. Uh, this person says there. I don't know where there is, but there was a massacre a number of years ago, and the school apparently houses and educates some of the orphans oh. from that. So okay, that sounds nice. Yeah. Uh, we had someone write into us. Uh, Allison wrote into us about Plan International. Okay. Um, which apparently you can sponsor children. Uh. Allison also tells us that in the USA, they describe themselves as a girls' rights organization. Huh. Uh, but in the UK, where Allison is, apparently they don't keep... Uh, it's not just for girls. But oh, okay. a lot of stuff about uh, reproductive rights for oh, girls, that okay. sort of thing. Cool. And non-religious. That's good. Um, Don uh, from Canada mentioned doctors without borders i can confirm that that is a very good yeah uh, thing to donate to right that's that's a good uh, that's awesome so so there's a few options uh th we had a bunch of people send some send stuff in uh maybe we'll do another another round next week sounds good yeah uh melanie wrote into us hi frank and dan uh this is in reference to your recent tragedy oh the the flood the, uh the the great flood the great flood uh, hi, Frank and Dan. I had a similar godless experience to Frank's flood this week. One of my nibblings uh, had a severe birth defect. Hmm. I don't. I don't think that's tr that's exactly the same as a flood, but if but I get where where Melanie's going. Mm -hmm. So okay. Uh, anyway, uh, the nibblings had a birth defect and had major surgery to correct it this past week. Hmm. I'm the old, only heathen in my family. The rest are devout Mormons. Hmm. I noticed that even though I was the only one with no faith in a God, I was feeling the most calm about the surgery. Everyone else was stressing and praying and pleading with God to guide the surgeon's hands and protect the baby from harm and mishap. I was calm as a summer's morning. Hmm. The surgery went beautifully. Our little guy was happily playing with toys in just a few, just a few hours later. Hmm. My family relaxed and rejoiced and thanked God for making the surgery go well. That's when I realized that I was the only one who wasn't afraid that a shifty sky daddy might have plans to take baby away from us during the surgery. I was trusting in the arm of the flesh of the, sur in, uh, of the surgeons who had spent yeah. thousands of hours becoming experts in pediatric surgery. Yeah. And my family was trusting in the will of an unknowable God who randomly snatches babies away from their families to fulfill a quote higher cause. I'm so glad I escaped the faith and hmm. that plagues the faithful with fear. Hmm. So yeah, I think that's a, an that's excellent a great perspective. Yeah. Uh, James uh, wrote into us, uh, dear Frank and Dan, I drive a taxi in Brisbane, Queens, Queensland, Australia. And I've written in before at the time of writing Brisbane is uh, Brisbane and its surrounding areas are in a hard lockdown oh, yeah. with a strict stay-at-home order uh, due to Delta strain outbreak mm. uh, involving several schools. Of course, this most likely 
Wouldn't have been a problem if our coal fondling ceiling warbler in chief Scott Morrison had organized <laughs> enough vaccine doses. I shouldn't be surprised, though, as he has a habit of nicking off to Hawaii when large sections of the continent are on fire. Jesus. Despite being in a serious financial hole and having to deal with maskless ding-dongs, I feel I am coping surprisingly well. As a former mainstream Protestant who went through a Wiccan phase, I can't help but to think I would have prayed or cast a spell about it uh, for, at the very least, reassurance. Mm. However, I also think that this would have been an extra piece of software my brain had to run, which would have only added to the stress. Mm. This wouldn't have been, this wouldn't be in a why is Jesus slash the gods ignoring me kind of way, just something else to process. And yeah. that's from James. Yeah. I think that's a great point. That's, yeah. I've never really thought of it that way. Just the, yeah, you like, There's more. To okay, it's supposed to be comforting, but like you have to run everything through this other filter. You've right. got this whole other thing that you've just got to sort of, that's just going to eat up your, your processing right. power. In order to get it all to conform with that yeah instead of, instead of reality yeah instead of just sort of acknowledging and dealing with the problem at hand yeah you gotta you gotta run it through the filter yeah send it send it through and 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 see what comes back out of out the other side and then deal with things yeah and i like that yeah and yeah. It, and it's and it goes two ways right like it has to come in through the filter and then everything has to process out through the filter too it's yeah. like it's too much yeah it's too much. So thanks for all of that. Do we have some folks to thank this week, Frank? Oh, Dewey Dan. Don't call me Dewey Dan. Your name is Dewey Dan. <laughs> we had uh, we had a number of people, like a true n number of people sign up on Patreon this week. Oh. Uh, kind of remarkable, in fact. Um, for us, other for, shows get all sorts no, of Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, we have uh, three new deacons this week. Excellent. Uh, we have Alfred, uh, Maggie, and Tara. Ooh. Um, we also have three new teachers. We have William, Warren, and Yo-Yo. Okay. I, yeah, actually, it's Yo-Yo Mike. I'm going to say the, okay. the, the full name there. Um so thank you to the three of you. We also have a new priest uh, by the name of Jorg. Wonderful. Uh, and we have a new patriarch. Oh! By the name of Emily. Look out, Emily. You are a, whew, a prognosticator now. I love, I, you know, I've always loved giving women the priesthood, but it's all it's especially nice to give them the title of patriarch. Mm -hmm. There's just something yeah. wonderful. Welcome, welcome, Emily. To being at the head of the patriarchy. <laughs> Congratulations to you on that. Yes. Uh, and so if you'd like to join uh, these kind folk, you can do so by going to thankgodimatheist.com and clicking on the support tab. And that lets you go over to Patreon or to PayPal and, and support the show. And Dan, yeah. as always, we have our top donor to thank. Just one. Just one this week. Oh! Um, our Lord and Savior... Reigning supreme, Demonium. Woo! Thanks, guys. Stick around. There is more show coming up. Frank, Deanne, I want you to put yourself back uh, to to your childhood. <laughs> Go back and 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 remember those three hours a week. Oh of God! Mormon Church that we endured. Oh my God! It was. I, I mean, it's a nightmare. Yeah. It's a. It's a living hell. However, I want you to look around the room. <laughs> it doesn't even have to be church. You could go to an activity. Imagine one of those activities where, mm. where, uh, where you know they're trying to create good wholesome fun mm. for the kids in the ward. Oh yeah. And uh, and think about the men. Who were our, who were the age then that we are now? Yeah, you and I are are are, are in our mid forties. We are middle aged. Yeah, is what we are. We we we've got gray in our beards. Yeah. Uh, well, the ones that were are uh, as old as we are now. I mean, most likely their like youngest was, 
you know, graduating from high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite, not quite, not quite. But because, you know, Mormons start early Yeah, is the joke there. But um, no, like Dan, these guys had everything figured out. I tell you what, uh, they, when I imagine those men, mm -hmm. it just felt like they knew everything. Mm -hmm. They understood the world. They were wise. And yeah. I grant that that's like kind of a kid's view of how adults are in general. Sure. Right. But my God, now when I look at them mm -hmm. with the perspective of being one of them, being <laughs> of that age, my, what a bunch of dipshits <laughs> they were and are. Like, I think about I the know. guys who, and of course, when, when we were that age, the ones who were our age were baby boomers. Yeah. And I think there is something special there, Dan. I about, think that there, about that generation. Yeah. They, I think they, um. I think they saw themselves that way too. Yeah, I'm Whereas sorry, I boomers, but uh, <laughs> listen. Yeah, you guys kind of fucked everything up, and, yeah. and not you personally. I'm sure you're great, uh, <laughs> but your generation, like we look at somebody like a Donald Trump, yeah, who is who has literally never questioned a single thing he's ever done. Right, he is absolutely certain that everything he says is correct. Everything mm -hmm. he does is right yeah and uh and yes he's the great extreme of the generation but these were these guys they just they everything and nothing makes you more nothing makes you more comfortable in that personal certainty than religion right yeah it is it is the safe haven for the undeserved uh certainty of the uh, of of the the white men and, and, and the Karens of the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's remarkable I mean, because I, I do think that that does carry over still though. Right. I, I think that if you look at like the, the, the specifically the Mormon men our age, yeah. right. Those are some pretty confident in their stance. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, guys. That's right? the thing is that one of the things that religion provides you and an extreme religion is even strong is easy, makes it even easier mm -hmm. is if you buy, if you like the deal that you make with them mm -hmm. is that I, if you buy into our whole line of bullshit, mm -hmm. You got to pay for it. It's 10% of your income. Right. And you got to espouse it and you got to listen to it for hours every week. And you got to, you got to, you got to run the game all, straight down the barrel. Yeah. Well, you, if you do that, mm -hmm. you never have to question you ever. Oh, that, yeah. No, yeah. You never you have to ask anything about yourself. Am I wrong about this? Because the because you're right. Because you get to because know <laughs> how right you are. Well, you're you're right with the Lord. Yeah. Right. So what uh, what what other way do you need to be right in this world? What other way could you possibly be right? Yeah. If you're not right with, it is it and our generation. We were talking about this. You know, we're Generation X. Mm. We're kind of the 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 tail end towards the end of Gen X. But mm -hmm. we're we're that's our generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, our generation, like all of our friends, we question ourselves. I think so. Yeah, uh, absolutely. A lot. It's almost like the the thing that, you know, it, 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 we do it too much. <laughs> Maybe. Right? Like it is kind of a hallmark, I think. Yeah. Isn't it? Our, our generation is basically uh, one walking personal crisis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's lasted long enough that now we're all just jaded and we just uh, sort of don't care about it anymore. But like, we're definitely that's that was kind of our whole thing. We yeah. were unsure about everything, and especially us. Yeah, I mean, I think I've I've sort of lived long enough and have done enough things that I have just sort of this basic confidence that like, well, life just kind of works. Yeah. Burr. Yeah, exactly. N nothing I really did to, to, to make life work. We've witnessed <laughs> ourselves make enough catastrophic errors and still been fine to go, oh, I guess c catastrophe is just sort of part of the game. I guess that's just sort of <laughs> right. how you play. Right. But for those of us in our generation who can't handle that, mm -hmm. who can't question themselves, yeah. because it does take a, an, a, a, a strength that takes... Um, 
you, you got to be willing to actually like feel the pain of that. Mm. It hurts to realize, oh, I was the dickhead in that. Mm. Oh, shit, it was me. Right. I was the I was an idiot. Okay. I guess I have to figure out the pronouns thing too. Okay, I'll do it. Right. But if you're unwilling, if you can't do that sort of self-confrontation, mm. you run to religion. It's where you go. Yeah. And that's and that's who's there. That's that's why Greg Locke can just scream at the top of his lungs about COVID's not real and don't take the vaccine and there's no masks allowed in my circus tent. Because <laughs> he is 100% certain that he is right about something he knows he's wrong about. Yeah, and it's some and they're all cheering for the same and reason. And they're all they're all yep. and they're there not for what he's saying, but for the opportunity to not have to question themselves. Yeah, That's to, why they're there. To feel a little bit better. To feel like about being dicks. Yeah. Yeah. To feel like I don't have to question like if I want to hate a gay person, stop making me feel bad about it. Mhm. Mm all this political correctness. Yeah. Do you know what political correctness is? Not being a dick. <laughs> no, That's the true. whole point of political correctness. Yeah. And they're like, ah, fuck political correctness. All these politically correct liberals. It's like, no, dude, it's not, it's not a liberal thing. That's just a not being a dick thing. Yeah. So I think, uh. I, I, I think that that's the thing. I think that's one of the big draws. You have to pay a lot. It costs so much. But it's worth it to have that peace of mind. Yeah. Dan. To have to not have to question, to not have to You call it peace of mind. I'm wondering <laughs> if it's just the right not to use your mind. You can just let go. Mm. Yeah, that that's and that's peaceful. Yeah. You right? just you go to work Monday through Friday. And, yeah. and on the weekends, you you know, you make sure that you buy enough big toys to never have to confront anything <laughs> no you just insulted the big toy crowd dude everybody knows i bought an rv this year <laughs> i don't think i'm worried about it i i'm just saying the people who are filling the holes in their lives with big toys yeah exactly yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. it's just consume enough of my time that i don't have to have to actually self-confront on yeah. any point yeah. like I have to mow the lawn now. I have to do the thing. And now we're going to go jet skiing. And now we're going to go, you know, we're going to camping. Anything, anything to not think uh, that I might be wrong about something. Hmm. And then Jesus will take up a bunch of that time. And he'll and make me feel right about my life. And never learn one real thing about what the, the lessons of Jesus. Yeah. Right. The, well, the takeaway of of jesus's message what would be the point of learning that <laughs> of being a peacemaker or well i mean they get loving to, thy neighbor they can call themselves peacemakers they find very clever ways of making their hatred loving thy neighbor wasn't there a missile called the peacemaker <laughs> <laughs> there was a gun called the peacemaker. Uh, is that what it is okay. yeah. yeah 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 exactly yeah they're that, no irony no irony at all they are uh <laughs> they it, I just, I really think when I picture the Mormon men that I picture, like mm -hmm. you know the 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 patriarchs of the of Mormonism, it's they they are they are there to be right. Oh yeah, that is that like if there oh, is yeah. a quality that they possess, it is absolute certainty of their correctness. Mm -hmm. And the second that starts to waver. Guess who's listening to our show? <laughs> yeah, that's not the joke I was going to make. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, kids. Uh, if you have an alternate theory, uh, or if you just, uh, may, I don't know, maybe you have a different take on men in church. Maybe you've got a little, maybe you got a little kink. I don't know. Men in church? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Man in a suit and tie. Up there being all uptight. Mm. Yeah. You got to go defile that. <laughs> anyway, if you want to tell us about anything, uh, write to us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424 666 
888-448-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGIatheist, where you can see, I just recently posted a, a, a really fun little uh, snippet from our show that found its way to TikTok. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so go find it there on Facebook. And if you'd like to join one of our two members-only lounges, you can do so by going to thankgodimatheist.com slash members only yeah hey thanks so much to the red rock hot club for the use of their fine music and thanks to gordon johnston for the use of his music and thanks to all of you kids for tuning in we sure do appreciate you thanks guys bye-bye